Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We welcome all of you to our revival meetings. And this is the first night. We thank God for the opportunity once again together, together to be revived in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen? This is our first time. First time since the pandemic uh, to have a uh, open, open service, face-to-face -face service or face-to-face -face service during the week. And we thank God for the opportunity that he has given us. Okay? Still, I would encourage you to keep on wearing your mask and uh, we will still exercise safety precaution, precautions and safety measures and we will not allow the devil to give a, have an opportunity in our midst. Amen? Let's all stand up and let's begin to pray. <clears throat> and we pray in tongues, Father, we are so thankful for this opportunity that you have given us. We worship you, God. We honor you and we welcome you in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this opportunity that you have given us so that we can be soaked in your presence and soaked in your love. Abba, we welcome you. We welcome your Holy Spirit. And we have come thirsty and hungry for you. We want to be filled to overflowing. We want to be filled afresh. Lord, we pray that even those who, who will be watching in our Facebook Live, Abba, that your presence will also be upon them in their homes or wherever they are, that you would touch them and you fill them, O oh God, and bring deliverance, bring healing, and speak. going home, Abba Father, those in the cars, as they listen, as they watch, let your Holy Spirit come and hover over us. We just bless you. Come on, everybody, pray in tongues. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you in this house, Holy Spirit. Yoroba baba bara bashi ala rabo sondoro bakankara bashi Ora mama mandari baba bala rabo sonda la raba shakaraba Ya rabo sondoro bakaka karaba Ori baba baba raba shi ala rabo sonda raba kaka karaba Yoroba baba la rabo shi ala rabo sonda la rabe be kaya raba Yoroba sondoro baba karaba Abba, we thank you, Lord, that there is healing, there is deliverance in your presence, God. Thank you, Lord, that you will just touch us tonight. You will encourage and lift up your people, Lord. Lord, and the dry bones will be awakened and will come to life in the name of Jesus. And your river will rise in our midst, oh God. Yea, Rabba Bobo Rabba Baba Baba Shiki Yala Rabba Karaba Sunda Rabba. Come on, just lay hands on your heart and just ask God to fill you to overflowing tonight. Abba, we come. We come hungry, Lord, for your presence. I want more of you, oh God. More of you, Lord. Let there be signs, wonders, and miracles, oh Lord. Let there be vision, so God. As you have said, that in the last days you will pour out your spirit. Your sons and daughters, they will prophesy. Lord, the young men, oh Father, they will prophesy. The old men and women, they shall dream dreams, so God. Fill us tonight, God. Fill us tonight. Our hearts are noble ground, so God. Everything that is not yours, so God, shall be taken out. The thorns, Abba, the weeds, they shall be pulled from the roots. 
The rocks, oh God, the hard, the hard hearts, oh God, shall be made into fertile grounds, oh God. You will soften our hearts, oh God. We just bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Receive our praises and our worship. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I am reminding you to share this to your friends. Even those in the Facebook Live, share this to your friends. Even those who are abroad, in other places, in other uh, islands, other nations, let them also soak in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen? Come on, let's worship our God. Amen. God is good. Amen. And it is said in His Word that when two or three are gathered in this place, the Lord is with them. And we believe that God is in this place. Amen. Amen. So let us worship Him and give Him all the glory and all the praise that He deserves. Come on, let us welcome Him.
welcome you in this place. We welcome you in our hearts. Can you to move in our lives, oh God.
to follow the Holy Spirit right now. Amen. Are you willing? Come on. If he goes to the left, then we go to the left. If he goes to the right, then we go to the right. We're going to jump, jump, re jump, jump in the river. Jump, 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 jump. Everybody, if he goes to the left, if he goes to the left. God, thank you, Lord. Can we just lift our hands? Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we just invite you in this place. And Lord, feel each heart, feel each chair, God. Feel em every empty vessel, God. Let's just continue to raise our hands. Welcome the presence of God, God tonight. And Lord, we feel it, God.
Amen. The Spirit of God is in your hearts tonight. The Spirit of God is in your chair tonight, beside you, in your um, bodies tonight.
just say there's a miracle that can happen now? A miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Let the Spirit of is going to happen in this place. Amen? How many of you have come to believe you're believing that a miracle shall happen in your life? Amen. You may all be seated. Thank you for coming this evening. You are going to be filled as you come empty and hungry for the presence of the Almighty God. And even those in our Facebook live, uh, live stream uh, allow the Holy Spirit to also move you and touch you wherever you are, okay? I believe that you have brought, you have brought the tithes and your offerings to the Lord, so we will give you the opportunity to place it at the feet of Jesus, okay? Atong basahon sa binisaya, again, remind ourselves of what the Bible says in Malachi 3, Verses 10. Dada ang tibuok nga ikapulo ngadto sa templo. Okay, so we have been told, we have been instructed. Aron adunay pagkaon dito. So layi ako, huwag makita ninyo nga ablihan ko ang mga bintana sa langit o gibubo ko kaninyo sa madagayaon gayon ang nga ang mga panalangin. Dili ko tugutan ang mga mananap sa pagladlag sa inyong mga tanom. Aron ang inyong kaparasan, mamunga o daghan. Unya ang katawhan sa tanang kanasuran mo ingon, bulahan ka mo. Unsa ta mga kaigsuunan? Okay. Make it personal. Ina, bulahan ako. Okay, bulahan. So we have OPP, Open Heavens, Protection and Provision. Okay? Mauna ang saad sa ginoo. Mauna ang gitawag kita nga mga bulahan, nga mga katawhan sa atong ginoong Diyos. Okay? So kung kinalan mo envelope, palihog, isa lang inyong kamot. Isa lang para hatagan mo envelope. So we have envelopes there. And then just stay in your seats. Lingkod lang mo. And uh, our ushers are going to get themselves ready. We will always give you the opportunity to bring the tithes of God and your seeds to the Lord. So you are going to be blessed all the more. Amen. And people around you, they shall say, yours is a delightful land. Hallelujah. Salamat kay Ginoo, no? After the pandemic, this is the first time that we gather together during the week. Let's give a big clap offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay? Are you all ready? Yes. We are excited and cheerful. Cheerful givers. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Your word is true. You have been our blesser. You have been our provider. We do not lack anything because you are our Jehovah Jireh. Lord, we have income. We have produced and we have food on our table, and you have protected us, O oh God, from sicknesses and diseases, because you are upon us, O oh Lord. As you have promised, the heavens above us are open. You pour out so much blessings that we have no room enough to contain them, and you are going to protect 
our crops. You're going to protect our businesses. You're going to protect us, oh God, from the pestilence. And Lord, anything that would devour, you're going to protect us, oh God. You, yourself, will rebuke the devourer in our lives. Receive your tithes and receive our seeds, our offerings, and our pledges to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Take it. Go around, ushers. And stay there in your seats and let the ashes go around. Okay. And those who are... Welcome, PC Go! Hey, Max, I bet you were blessed by the offering thought, right? Amen. And now it's time to give back to the Lord. So, for those who are on site, there are people who will be receiving your tithes and offerings. And for those who are online, you can transfer your Titan offering into these bank accounts. So never forget, those who give generously, reaps generously. And also, set your heart right in giving back to the Lord. And lastly, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. Tonight is a very special night. I kindly change the English service, 9.30 a.m. Easter Sunday. <laughs> kindly change it, please. Okay. <laughs> this is a very special night. We are thankful for the opportunity that the Lord has given us. Okay, na ay mga pastor kauban na to karon. Usa ni sila ka team. Actually, daghan sila. How many are you, pastor? Oh, nine from Santa Rosa and four from Danao. Can we stand up? Let's all welcome all of them. Yeah. Okay. Na asi pastor o si pastora akom. Panyado. <laughs> Actually, brother-in-law or sister-in-law ni Pastor Joel of ni Pastora Jean. So they are in the now. And uh, ang atong guest karon. Actually, murag, di naman ni siya guest. <laughs> Dugay nakaayong nga wala kabalik. Mga, uh, uh, nagkailan may katong panahon sa revival, panahon na ni Rodney Howard Brown. How many of you know that name? Yeah. Dito mi nagkaila o niya giimbitahan min sa sa ilahang uh, simbahan dito sa Santo Rosa. So, isimple ra na ko ang akong introduction sa ila because we would like to give him the opportunity to really minister to us. Married to one wife, si Pastora Elma, and blessed with one daughter, si ja Jaziel. Did I say it right? Adonica. Okay, may I ask the daughter to stand up. Yeah, that's a, that's your daughter. Only one daughter. And they live, uh, they're pastoring the church in Santa Rosa for almost 22 years. So, ang butong kabaw ba niyong binisaya? Bisdak yun. Bisdak na yun yapon. So, they've been there for 22 years uh, sa Santa Rosa and uh, sa New Life. New Life under Pastor Paul Chase. Okay, it's a new life. So we went there, mga 20 years ago na sa to. <laughs> and we thank God for the opportunity nga gihatag sa ginoo na to karon. So shall we all welcome the team of Pastor uh, Tom Molina. Yes. And also si Pastora. Patindugon, ikaw nila ila, pa ila ila, Pastor. Praise God. Dagang salamat, Pastor Shoni. Bisdak yun di ay. <laughs> Mayong gabi, kanin yung tanan. Praise the Lord. Well, sa kiingon pa, usara ang akong asawa, kay ang pastor di limang tugutan nga na ay duha. Pastor na di ay. Kristo Hanon. Pastor Elma, unya si Jazz. And then ang among mga kauban, actually, tulo, tulo kanila among mga staff sa church, full-time staff sa church. They've been working with us for many years already. And then, yung, ang uban, I graduate sa among training center nga, gitawag New Life Training Center 
si Pastora Sherwin, Sister Rose, Sister Aida. Sino na sa likod? Staff kayo eh. Okay, si Genesis, uh, Jude, Sharon. So, lima ming tanan gikan sa gikan sa Santa Rosa. Sayok di ay ko, dili lang di ay upat sila gikan sa Danao. Lima di ay kay di man si Winalin. 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 Now, before we go ahead, I go ahead and share, gusto po, gusto, I mean, buot na ako nga ipaambit usa ang katuyuan nga nung amumang, amumang kining gibuhat taliwala ni ining pandemic. I mean, this is not very popular. As a matter of fact, after this, pagbalik na mo sa Santa Rosa, we might, we might be at, we might be receiving so many attacks coming from all directions. Because people might have thought, would say, might, might have suggested, if you only had stayed in Santa Rosa, I mean, it would be well with you. But this is our fourth day in the island, in the province of Cebu. And it has been more than well with us since we arrived sa probinsya sa Cebu. And the reason why amo kinigibuhat in the midst of pandemic is because kapalumanta nga ang pandemic never came nga ang ginoo na hibulong. Pipila ka rin ang mutuo nga God was surprised when pandemic came. No, He wasn't. He knows it from the very beginning. He knows that this pestilence, which is Jesus talked about it in Matthew 24, that in the last days, in the end times, there will be wars, rumors of wars, kingdom will fight against kingdom, and then there will be earthquakes in some places and pestilences. Pandemics are pestilences. So Jesus talked about this even before He came. And so I believe God was not surprised. Now we all know that because God was not surprised when this happened, the thing that surprises God was the ko kaparte sa church had never stood their ground. Why? Because much of us, we thought that this pandemic is an attack of the enemy against a government. We thought that this pandemic is an attack against businesses or maybe even families but not necessarily the church. How many of you know that this pandemic, it all comes from the devil? If you heard about how many people have died, listen to me, my God is not a killer. As a matter of fact, here's what I would like to let you know. My God is never a taker of life. He never takes... In he has more than life. I mean, he has an abundant life. Why would he take some life? He's a giver of life. I mean, we have some members in our church, particularly yung husband ni Pastor Sherwin. Sila ang among outreach pastor dito sa San Pedro City, Laguna. Her husband had gone home to be with the Lord last year. And they said it was all because of COVID. And some people would say, the Lord took Pastor Gilbert. My question is, if the Lord took him, what will he do now that he is in heaven? What will he be doing? You would say, well, I know he's doing one thing. He's, he's praising and worshiping the Lord. Can't you not praise and worship the Lord while you are here? Di ba ka makadaig? Di ka ba makagsamba sa gino? Samantala, aniya ka dire? You don't need to go to heaven because God placed you here for a certain time, for a certain length of time because He has a purpose. And I believe that that purpose is no other than even when you go 
Or even before you go, you should be able to bring somebody along with you. Because you cannot take your money with you. You cannot take your properties with you. You cannot take anything with you except souls. I mean, nahibulong ko that even in this pandemic, Christian business people are trying to make more money than ever before. Now that doesn't mean God does not want us to have more money. But the thing is, you cannot, you cannot make it as your goal. Your goal and mine should be to win the lost at any cost. And I will prove you that, that even in pandemic, people are being saved. I can show you. As a matter of fact, these are not people that are being saved virtually. These are people that are being saved face to face. Being brought back to the Lord. We have a few minutes video. I don't know. Did you give it to the media? We actually have two videos that can show you. This, is, this happened very recently. Actually, two days ago. Six of our members went out in just about an hour into the streets and highways. And began to lead people to the Lord. Policemen. I mean, mga tindira sa... I mean... From all walks of life. And in just a span of an hour, these 16 members of mine had brought 74 people into the kingdom of God. And so I would like, I would like to show you. You see, this pandemic will never stop the church. It won't, you see, we might have been stopped from gathering. Actually, if we are fighting for gathering na kinanglan magtapak na ta, kinanglan magipon na ta, dugay-dugay na oy. But actually, if you don't understand why we should gather, then the gathering is useless. Because I understand that the reason why we have to gather is so that we should scatter. Why do we need to scatter? Because after gathering, you were encouraged, you were filled, nadasig ka, na puno ka sa balang spirito, na bagong imong kinabuhi, then, sa imong paghawa, gikan sa gathering, maura ba gihapon ang imong kinabuhi? That should never be. We all supposed, as we gather, we are all supposed to scatter, and in this scattering, we all should be able to let other people have the same opportunity that we have, so that we would be able to easily bring them to the Lord. Is the video ready? Okay. Sinya sa ako para we don't have all evening here. I mean, I don't know if you're doing this, but our responsibility, our job is, if you're doing this, to encourage you to even do this some more. If you are not, then I believe it's about time for you to start doing this. This happened outside the church, but even inside the church, just in the past, the past few days, we were able to lead people to the Lord, about 18 of them, exactly right? 18 of them were brought by somebody to the church and had given the opportunity to come down to the altar and receive the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior. I don't have any problem with people being saved virtually. My problem is I wasn't I was not saved virtually. I was saved radically. I was saved radically. Which means to say right after I got saved I never went back to my old life. As a matter of fact right after that time right after that moment I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. I, I immediately went into the streets, into the highways, and looked for people to be saved, looked for the sick to be healed, looked for demons. Now, demon possessed to be delivered. Even before I went to Bible school, even before I went to, I, I, even before I got the opportunity to meet Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. I mean, too many people said, well, 
That's why he's a revivalist because he mitred her. No, even before Ronnie Howard Brown, I was, I was winning the lost. I was healing the sick. I was casting out demons. I was setting people free. Not necessarily me, but the power of God in me. Now you have to understand, the spirit in me is no different than the spirit of God in you. And you would say, Pastor, Pastor Kakasi, I wasn't a pastor during that time. I wasn't a youth pastor. I wasn't an assistant pastor. I wasn't an associate pastor. I was just a Christian. I was just a believer. And you know what? If God did it with me, He can do it with anyone. And I believe that this revival that already has begun in our hearts. Kasi hindi naman pwede tayo nagre-rely ng revival from the pulpit. You see, revival doesn't flow from the full pulpit. I mean, revival, it flows from the very heart of God into our hearts. Because if it, it, if it only runs from the pulpit, then you can only be revived during the service. If there's no service, there's no revival. How many of you know na revival is something that we must have consistently? Because my definition of revival, although many people can give different definition, but my definition of revival is the presence of God comes. People might say, no, revival means people are being saved. No, the people that got saved are just a result of revival. Revival means the sick are healed. No, healing is just a result of the presence of God. So, the way I define it, which is you can, I can prove it to you in Habakkuk chapter 2. That when, that when Habakkuk was praying for revival, the Bible says, then God came. But you would say, but Pastor Tom, God is here. I mean, we sing the song, God is here. But how many of you know that our God is a dimensional God? He is a multi, actually multi-dimensional God. Like, we all believe that God is everywhere. Tuo ba tang ang ginoo na asa bisag asang dapit? Na asa sa likuranan sa imong pungkuanan? Lingkuranan, pungkuanan? <laughs> Lingkuranan? God is everywhere. He is omnipresence. But you see, even if God is omnipresence, that doesn't mean that God is performing signs, wonders, and miracles. 139, in the book of Psalms, it says, even if you would go to hell, you'll find me there. And to kasa impierno, which don't try, because you might not be able to get back. Kung ikaw mo to sa impierno, I'm there. But what God is doing in hell? What God is doing in Hades, what God is doing in that part of the universe na dapat tapunan lamang ng mga makasalanan. God is not doing anything. That might be the first dimension of the presence of God. But the second dimension of the presence of God is, we all know this as Christians. We would all gather together and say, hold our hands together and we would say, Lord, your word says that where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. Isn't that we know that scripture, we know that we, we pray that prayer all the time. Two or three are gathered together, God is there. Isn't God there everywhere? Isn't God present everywhere? Why do we believe that God is with us when we gather together? Two or three of us are gathered together in His name. We go because we believe that that kind of presence is the next dimension of God being present everywhere. But God can be there where two or three are gathered together, but that that doesn't mean something is happening. Although, of course, you do not have to see it, you don't have to feel it. Because God is working. He never stopped working. He is our way maker. He is our miracle worker. He is the light in the darkness. So whether you feel him or not, whether you see him or not, he's working. But the greatest dimension of his presence is what the church needs today. 
His third dimensional presence is what we need today. You know what is this? It is the dimension of his manifest presence. Because when God manifests his presence, you may have come tonight sick in whatever part of your body. I actually do not have to lay my hands on you. You actually can receive your healing. Sandali, baka nagkamali ako. Pentecostal ba ito na church? Sa aking pagkakalam, Pentecostal yung kaibigan ko. Si Bishop Noel. Sa pagkakalam, charismatic yung kaibigan ko. By the way, I'm so thankful na pinaun, pinaunlakan niya kami na makarating dito. You see, I've said it. Since we become so serious with the move of God, we are no longer going by invitation. We're no longer going by invitation. We are now going by direction. Pastor Noel, Bishop Noel had not invited us to come. I talked to him, I said, we are coming. And we have brought something with us. We have brought something with us. And like what I've said, if there's anything that the church needs today, and really, dili natong pwede tanawon nga kita lamang ang nagkinahanglan ani, ang atong tibuok nga nasod nagkinahanglan og manifest presence of God. You can have come tonight depressed but you don't have to leave this place the same way how can that happen because the presence of god had manifested i mean we were in the now i think it was the first night somebody was watching he had asthma attack And in the middle of my preaching, he began, she, I mean, she began to testify and tell everybody online, I got the touch of God and I'm healed. Asthma had left my body. Now, if you're going to ask me, it was not even my prayer. I was in prayer for anyone who was asthmatic. I was not. As a matter of fact, I did not have a word of knowledge saying somebody who's watching in the comfort of their homes and you have an asthma attack, but in the name of Jesus. No, I, that's, I didn't have anything like that. She just began to message and say, I got healed. That is the kind of presence we want. Because for too many times, we would recognize people who have the gifts of healing. Mayroon mga tao nga, naa kanila ang gasa sa pag-ayo sa naay may sakit. How many of you know that each and every one of us can actually heal the sick? If you are a believer, you can heal the sick. Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, If you believe in me, these signs will follow them that believe. How many believers do we have here tonight? Come on, let me ask you again. How many believers do we have here tonight? Jesus said, this sign will follow you. Now, I don't have to mention all the signs, but let me go down to the very last sign. He said, as a believer, you will lay your hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Now, if you are a believer, then... You should have laid your hands on somebody who's sick. Well, Pastor Tom, what if they die? Then you would say God is a liar? No, let a man be a liar. But let my God be true and faithful. If the person died after you prayed, you don't even have to feel bad. You did not kill the person. Subuko kayo, dili na good kumuusap. Dili na good kumuusap. Kausa na lang. You see, are we not ready yet? Okay, still doing its job. Anyway, 
I prayed for people. Of course, not right after I prayed they die. But I have purpose in my heart. The death of someone, hindi ako ang may gawa, will never ever stop me from believing that God will one day raise somebody from the dead, not just heal the sick. But raise somebody from the dead. I mean, too many times we pray for the sick and then they die. When we are supposed to be raising the dead. But, but, but Pastor Tom, lahirag yun kung ang imong giampuan na matay. Madalag yun ka. Di na ka muusap. Well, I remember Lester Sumrall. I remember Oral Roberts. I, I remember many men, might, mighty great men of God. When they were interrupted while they were praying, people on the healing line, gi interrupt sila giingon, Sir, 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 what would you do if the person you have prayed for died? Kung sa imong pagabuhaton, kung kahuman nga ang tao nga imong giampuan na matay, dihat, dihat dayon, kung sa imong pagabuhaton. Well, it's and every one of them, Lister Samuel, Oral Roberts, and many other great men of God, they said, I mean, this is in the healing line. He would say, Next. He would go right to the next person. Pray again. And then the person would interrupt them again. Sir, 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 what would you do if the person dies right after you prayed for them? He would not even entertain those questions. He went on and on and on and on and say, next, next, next. That means you should never allow anything to stop you from believing God to bring healing to the sick. Two of our very gifted people in our church. One is Pastor Sherwin's husband. And then the other guy is younger, 31 years old. Pastor Sherwin's husband was 45. The other brother is only 31. Both of them are fine young men. They could, they could go very far in their journey with the Lord. The 31-year-old guy is a soul winner. I mean, these are good people. Sometimes nga mga utana ka, Lord, nga naman ang mga maayong tao mo pa yung nauna sa mga salbahe. <laughs> Bakit sila? Ang babait nila, Lord. <laughs> ang dalawang ito ay hindi po nagdulot ng problema sa amin. Hindi naging pasaway sa kanilang pastor. Lord, mayroong pasaway dito sa church. Bakit hindi na lang yun? Di ba ang gaba para lamang sa mga sadan? <laughs> Dilis para sa mga buutan? <laughs> but, I mean, of course, because we understand that death is not, we don't lose anything. The Apostle Paul says that to live is Christ, but to die is gain. So, maaring nagluksa, maaring nalungkot, maaring nagdalamhati si Pastor Sherwin sa tulog kabulan, which actually not, actually not, because when Pastor Gilbert was gone, she took the place of being the pastor of the church. Ilang buwan, ikaw ka agad ang nag-preach pagkatapos na two months. After two months, siya na ang nibarog sa iyong kongregasyon, Aron Muwali. Nawadaan og asawa. Naw- I mean, asawa doon. Tag-alog yun. Nawadaan og bana. Pero nitindog. You can actually expect that people will begin to leave the church and find another. But the great thing about it is these people are intact and actually, I mean, people are being added to the Lord week by week by week by week by week. If we think we need another great preacher, if we think we need another church, if we think another sistema, like SEAL Group, like G12. I mean, I have nothing against this. I have, I have pastors who are my good friends. If we think we need another 40 days of fasting to observe the purpose-driven life, and if we think that that is the answer to what our nation is facing, you might have been smoking some bad weed, which is called Mary Jane. I tell you, our nation only need one thing. 
the tangible manifest presence of God. In our church, we are looking forward that anybody that comes in, pagsulod nga pagsulod, sapultahan sa among simbahan, no matter what they're carrying, they might have burdens carrying with them, they might have been yoked, they might have been sick, they might have been depressed, I mean, they might have some suicidal attempts, but as soon as they stepped in, even before the service began, they would begin to feel the presence of God setting them free. You know what the reason why I believe that? Kapalumo ko nga nung gatuo ko nga ingunaan ang may tabo. Tungon kaya ang ginoon dili na kinahanglan ang tabanggikan sa tao. Ug ang tao... Koto bramang ang iyang mabuhat sa kung unsa iyang mabuhat. Pero kung ang ginoo mo kunsad, kung ang ginoo mo baba, pag bumaba ang presensya ng Panginoon, every single one of us will be touched, every single one of us will be changed, every single one of us will be revived. And not only that we get revived because we came, we get revived because from here, we know that revival is not just for us to keep, but revival is for us to spread. Listen to me. Revival that is taking place in the church should, should spread faster than this virus. Dapat. Dapat kusog ang pag-spread. I remember last year nga ang Cebu City o Cebu Province ang highest pointer sa Cebu o Pilipinas. Kapalo mo, last year na himumog highest pointer nga kinahanglan magpadala o mga pulis sundalo gikan sa Manila. You remember that? And the reason why nagpadala silang reinforcement sa mga military, police diri sa Cebu, tungod kay paspas ra kaayo ang pag-spread sa virus. But thankfully, it's no longer the same way today. And I really believe my, my bahagi jan ang church. You have done something to, to slow the spread of the virus. You might say, well, because the Department of Health has done something. I don't think our nation needs the help of the health experts. Tingnan mo Sila nga ang mga health experts pero marami na rin sa kanila ang nalagas. How many of them ilan na sa kanila nalagas? Before we came. Na inagsulti namon na mga two particular doctors are hospitalized because of COVID. One actually died. And then yung isa naghihingalo pa rin. So if we think that they are the answer, they are what we want. I mean, sayop na. Tungod kay ang usa lang nga atong gilauman way lain kundi ang Ginoo. And I know when the manifest presence of God begins to be demonstrated not just inside the church but even outside the church, I know that this nation will now begin to turn to the Lord. And so, I want to share with you how did, this, how did this start. That even in the midst of pandemic, we will still be here up, up until the 17th. From here, we will be in Danao. And then from Danao, we will be in Lapu-Lapu. And then after that, of course, we will have r r You may want to go with us. But, makapagtanong ka, how in the world are they doing it? Santa Rosa is part of the NCR Plus, NCR Bubble, NCR, I mean, Pro Max, I mean, kung ano-ano lang ipangalan. Santa Rosa is part of Region 4, Laguna. So it's part of the ECQ. Maugani, mahibulong ka, ngano nakagawa man ka mo? Nakagawa man mo sa Santa Rosa? Well, kung dilig yun, yes, gino, hindi yun may makagawa. But we were actually prepared. We were ready. We have, we, have, we have medical certificate from the city health. We have acceptance letter from, from uh, Barangay Captain in Danao. 
that we would be here until the 17th. And we, were, we, we, we have all the documents. And so they don't have any reason to stop us. And so we came with this in mind. In 20, 2005, the Lord began to speak to us to spread the fire all over this nation. Ug among gitawag kato Holy Ghost Blast. Holy Ghost Blast among tawag. Kung mga tana kang anong Holy Ghost Blast, well, I like calling it Holy Ghost Blast because it doesn't seem familiar. It doesn't seem popular. I don't like doing things na parihas sa gibuhat sa ubang tao because I know God has called me to do something that is unique. There might be some similarities with what other people are doing. It will not be totally the same. And so when we receive the instruction from the Lord to do Holy Ghost Blast, back in 2005, we started it right away in our church. Tungon kayo ang akong katarungan, ang akong, ang akong kat- katwiran is... If I'm going to take this revive, this Holy Ghost revival in other churches, in other places, and I don't have it in my church, I would be a failure. It's just like what man of God said, what does it profit a man if he had win the whole world but lose his family? Unsa may kapuslanan, daghang imong nakabig ng mga kalag, aron ang mga kalag sa imong pamilya ng awala, padulong sa impyerno. You won't be a success not until you can start and begin in your Jerusalem. And so, let's watch this short video and then I will magpatuloy ko.
the first video, not this one. I mean, it's almost like it's a show, it's a Pastor Tom show. I, I don't like it. It's not a Pastor Tom show. I mean, you have put my face on the video. It's not, it's not about me. The people that got saved, you unang video, the people that got saved, 74, 74 souls with you guys going out. Not this one. Anyway, praise the Lord. So, back in 2005, the Lord spoke to us to do Holy Ghost Blast. And we, we started doing it in our church. So we travel around. We go from the north to the south, from the east to the west, which we were not able. In the Holy Ghost Blast, we were not able to do it in Cebu. And so during the lockdown, of course, you could, you could no longer do the Holy Ghost Blast because of the lockdown. But during the lockdown, there was one lazy Saturday morning. I was praying. Nadia ay tapulan nga Sabado, no? Lazy Saturday morning. I was praying. And then the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me, saying, Son, would you like to agree with me? Would you believe with me for 10 million Filipinos to be radically saved? Now, of course, I know some people can be saved without being radically saved. But the Lord showed me why He wanted 10 million Filipinos to be radically saved. Because if, if we can find 10 million Filipinos who are radically saved, this nation will never ever be the same again. Because every single one who are radically saved will also do the same thing to others. And so, nagunahon ako, kinsamang ko, Lord, if you're talking to me about Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa it not, is not even half a million. Ang population sa Santa Rosa is not even half a million. So I don't think you're talking to me that I would have to agree with you, that I would have to believe for you and with you for 10 million in Santa Rosa because there is none. And I begin to realize that he was talking about the entire nation of the Philippines. And of course, you would think, Well, I was not really thinking of who I was. As a matter of fact, I was thinking, Lord, who am I to agree with you? Who am I to believe with you for 10 million Filipinos to be radically safe? And then he began to impress into our hearts to do what we call now super colossal wave of God's glory. Now, Holy Ghost Blast was powerful. But I know this one is more powerful. And so, as we were praying, as we kept thinking, as we keep planning on when to do this, how to do this, because I know doing... It took us several millions of pesos doing the Holy Ghost Blast for 16 years. Because we would never go, we would never go to a city without blessing the city. Yes, we are ready to bless the city with, with the Spirit of God, with the Word of God. But we would never leave a city without blessing the city with something tangible. And so, I mean, it took us several millions of pesos. And, and our church is not full of millionaires. Ang among church, dili mga milyonaryo. Mahimo pa lamang milyonaryo. O may, muna yung gwapo nga, ang mga membro sa church, mahimog milyonaryo diya sa church. Dili, mahimog milyonaryo, samtang tuat sila sa kalibutan. Okay? Kung ang kalibutan ang magpadato nila, naluwas sila, pag-abot nila sa church, akala nimo kung sino silang hari sa church. Wala na diri sa Cebu, pero dito sa Laguna, Dagang Inunana. Na kung sila yung mga kwartahan, abi nila sila, silang nipalit sila, silang nipalit sa poste, silang nipalit sa equipment, silang nipalit sa 
Akala na, dahil mayroon lamang silang binili, akala na sila ng may-ari. Dong, akong pastor nimo, ako paghihapon ang masunod dili ikaw. Wa ko'y labot kung pila ka milyon ang imong gibutang sa simbahan. Ako ang gimugna sa ginoo aron mamastor ni ining simbahana, ako ang masunod. Dili ang imong kwarta. Salamat nga na ay muuyon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Kaya kung ingon anang imong kasing-kasing, you and your millions, go, leave, find another church. Well, somebody else, sa kalun ka. And so, I know it would, kailan magkinahanan ang dakong akwarta. But I wasn't concerned. I wasn't concerned. I wasn't writing. I wasn't. I wasn't soliciting. I wasn't hinting other people to give. I was just doing what was I, what, what was I supposed to do, and then the time came. We were thinking that we would start the super colossal wave of God's glory in Region One. Kay kung ikaw mag-ihap, di man ka magsugod mag-ihap. If you're counting 1 to 10, hindi man ka magsugod sa 5. So, sa among nahuna, as, as we start, as we embark into this new mandate that God has called us to do, we're sure to start in Region 1, Ilocos Region. Ilocos Sur, Ilocos Norte, uh, La Union, and then part of Pangasinan. We were thinking, yun ang direction na pupuntahan namin. And then while I was praying, immediately I begin, the Lord begins to lead me. No, 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 you're not going to Region 1. You're not going to, to do it by, by sequence, by 1, 2, by the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You're going to start it right in the heart of the Philippines. Do you know what is the heart of the Philippines? Cebu is. You are the heart. And then the other day, Pastor Edwin was telling us, Christianity started in Cebu. Although I have a little bit of objection to that. Because they did not come to Christianize Cebu. They came to commercialize Cebu. He was telling us that Christianity began in Cebu 500 years ago. And businesses, this is in your history, businesses start in Cebu. Now, if that kind of Christianity 500 years ago started here, why would he not do a genuine one by his glory hovering over the entire region, the entire city of Cebu, and the entire province of Cebu, and whatever happens here in the central part of Cebu will begin to spread all over the nation. I didn't understand in the beginning. Although I could easily communicate, I could easily communicate dito sa Cebu because I can speak Bisaya. Sa Norte, magkalisulid sa ko Ang alam ko lang na Ilocano ay awantilod. In the beginning, I didn't know, I didn't understand. But I begin to realize that the reason why God leads us here because from here it will spread. It will spread. Ang among next nga biyahe maybe next month will be some part of Eastern Visayas. We're, we're targeting Maasin City. We're targeting Bay Bay City. We're targeting uh, Ormoc City and then Tacloban City and then the next month, ang among target is Negros Oriental. Dumaguete, Bayawan, Tanhay, Baes. And then the, after that, maybe we would go up to the north. But you see, we are following according to God's direction. We are not going by the, by the invitation of churches, 
by ministerial associations. We are going by direction which I believe as we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, we will succeed in everything that we're going to do and that the day will come that the entire nation will bow down before Jesus. Not to speak with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. I mean, everybody can say it. But when knees are begin to bow down in compliance, not for the church to bow down to this virus, I mean, we might show another. We, we might show another. Vi I mean, a virus. Another another video. If somebody can do something, somebody. Mayroon nang share ng video. I think you probably have seen it because it's on Facebook. It's a public. I mean, everybody can see it. About the virus na, na naglakaw sa kalsada. Habang naglalakad ang, ang virus sa kalsada, ang unang nisugat niya, frontliner. Nabisag ang frontliner ni Luhod sa tubangan sa virus. Medical, medical frontliner. And then the next was Yung military, police, armed forces, nagbow down sa virus. And then the next one were actually religious people. Like imam, pastors, wala, wala gibutang dito ang pari, but I mean religious leaders. Pag-agi sa virus, even them, they bow down. Niluhod sila sa virus. Unya, ang bandang dulo, of course before the end, Tua dito ang Avengers. Si Incredible Hulk tua dito. Tua dito ang Justice, Justice League. Si Superman tua dito. So sa samtang galakaw ang virus, tua dito si Incredible Hulk, tua dito si Thor, tua dito si Superman, ang mga superheroes. Even the superheroes are bowing down to the virus. But the last contact with the virus was a young lad was a young child, young boy. Batanon. Ang batanon, wala siya ni pagilid, na natili siya sa gitna hanggang sa malapit na sa kanya ang virus, but he never bowed down to the virus. And he was surprised that the virus stops. And then he turned around. He realized why the virus stops. Because when he turned around, he saw Jesus coming. And when Jesus was coming, the young boy began to bow his knees before Jesus. And then the, the virus started disappearing. Begin to disappear. Listen to me. This virus is not greater than our Jesus. We are not supposed to bow down to this virus. We only are supposed to bow down to Jesus. And listen to me. The only way that can bring this entire nation to its knees, not in compliance to whatever protocol, but because the Word of God says so, is no other than the manifest presence of God that is bringing revival into the hearts of every single believer, every single child of God. Well, kasulti kong si Buano, pero I didn't, I wasn't born here. I didn't grow up here. I was, I was born and grow up in Leyte. But I would never get jealous. And I'm now, I mean, for almost, almost 22 years, pastoring in, in Laguna, Tagalog-speaking church. But I wouldn't get jealous if this super colossal wave of God's glory will actually officially begin here in this province in this city and will begin to spread all throughout this land. I would never get jealous in fact I would rejoice because I know in one way or another the Lord had made us to become a part of it. 
which you should feel you are so blessed. You're not lucky. You are blessed. You are blessed that this super colossal is officially beginning, is commencing and started starting from this very province. Who knows before the end of this year, whatever the Lord has done in here will echo all throughout the nation and that many will be complying what the word of God is saying. And we will not just be declaring with our mouths, with our lips that Jesus is Lord, but we will actually begin to bow down our knees and recognize him. And as we do that, we would begin to go to our workplace. We will begin to go to our school campuses. We'll begin to go anywhere and wherever we are. We represent who our God is. Our nation will never ever be able to see God again. Not unless they see it through us. Dili gayod makakita ang at ang tibuok na itong nasod. Dili nila makita ng ginoo. Kung dili sila matagaan o higayon, nga makakita sa ginoo, pinaagi na ito. You have to understand that this is the reason why you're here. Somebody else who probably you do not know or maybe some of them are very close to you. They needed to see God. They needed to feel God. They needed to smell God. They needed to have a taste of God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. They needed to hear the voice of God. But there is no other way. There is no other way that they will all be able to see God except seeing God through you. Sa mahabang panahon, inaasahan natin palagi that the pastors will be the one to show God to the world or to the people. No! There are only how many pastors in the Philippines? They are not going to show it. I mean, the body, it will take the body of Christ, which means to say, it will come from the youngest child to the oldest saint. It will come... I mean, it does not matter because there will be, nothing will be too young, nothing will be too old, nothing will be too poor, nothing will be too rich, nothing will be too tall, nothing will be too short, nothing will be too fat, nothing will be too thin. Every single one of God is just right to show our nation who our God is. By showing signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah! It's not about having the biggest church or the greatest number of people in the church. Look, look at the biggest churches in the nation today. Where are they? They have huge building. But they have not gathered for more than one year. I would never spend millions for a building that will never be used for a year. We have a brand new building. It doesn't cost multi-billion. It costs multi-million. We already, we only have spent about 15 to 18 million in the building. The building is not done yet. But since we have moved into the building that we have, it's a brand new building. Since we have moved into our building, we almost have used the building even in the midst of lockdown every single day. Why would I spend lots of money for a building that we would never use in a week? Or only use once a week? You're, you're wasting your money. So it's not how big your building is. It's not how big your church is. It's not how, how many, how, the numbers of people you have. Tingalig daga ang mga tao sa church, pero pipila ba kanila ang tinuod nga mga sa langit? Kung ang duha ka propita sa, sa Amerika nga nag-ingon, kung ang ginoo mo balik karon, This is what they said, two prophets, they agree. They never talked. The Lord showed them and gave an impression to them by saying, if he's going to come back today, 
Do you know kung mag, ilan lamang ang ma, ma, mararapture? These two prophets are reliable. I mean, their prophecies are accurate. And so they said, if Jesus will come today, only 20% of the church will be raptured. 20%? Mubu na kayo. It doesn't sound like our God is a mighty warrior. It doesn't sound like our God is a more than conqueror. He's a conquering God. I mean, 20%. That's not even part of the world. That's just the church. You see, if the church today in the world is 50%, Tunga sa population, we have, we have maybe about 7.56 billion population in the world. So, 3 point, 3 point something. And then from the 3 point something, only 20%, that would be very sad. And thankfully, it's not going to come that way. Thankfully, it's not going to come that way. And the reason why it's going to come that way, because I believe each and every one of us will be ignited to do our job. But we won't just do this job on our own ability and power. Dili kini na ito mahimo tungod lamang na atay kusganta, magi alamunta. I mean, put all your intelligence aside. Put all your abilities aside. It, it won't work. The word of God is very clear. It says it's not by might. It is talking about the might of man. It is not by power. Not by the power of man, but it is by the Spirit of God. And that's why the Spirit of God must and should begin to take over our life. We must be filled. If you have bowed down to your situation and circumstance, I would like to encourage you to rise up and stand. Your God in you is greater than your circumstance. You do not have to comply. You don't have to cave. You don't have to compromise. The word of God says, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Than the devil himself who is causing all the killing. Than the devil himself who is causing all this, the destroying. The devil himself who is causing all the killing. I mean, he's the one. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. All throughout history, life always overcomes death. Just as light overcomes darkness. Just as healing always overcomes sickness and disease. Just as freedom always overcomes captivity and bondages. So if we're going to let our God begin to arise within us, then something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. I've heard lots of story about churches in Cebu. Not just Cebu City, but Cebu Province. And it breaks my heart. And I know it breaks the heart of God. And that's why even with just a few of us that are here, we can represent the entire region. We can represent, in fact, the entire nation. If we would turn away, if we would turn our back from being carnal, from being worldly, from being greed, from being covetous, from fulfilling the indulgence of our flesh, but by following and leading according to the Spirit. I know we, we Pentecostal and Charismatics, we are being criticized that we are too much into the gifts of the Spirit. We are too much into the gifts of the Spirit. Listen to me, you can, never too, you can never have too much of the gifts of the Spirit without having the character of the Spirit. You can never have too much. 
Because the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit are supposed to go together. You can never have the one and then neglect the other. That's why I believe that it's about time that as God raised the church, as God would hit churches all over this land with the super colossal wave of God's glory, people who might have come from obscurity, people you might not know, faces you might have not seen, voices you might not have heard, but because God is raising them up in this day and age, God will use them tremendously. Pagagamitun sila sa ginoo. And the good thing about it, wala mangita ang ginoo sa usa ka tao nga maabilidad na. Ang hinahanap ng Panginoon ay mga taong simply katulad ko, katulad mo. Ordinaryo. Ordinaryong tao. Hindi tinating ala. Hindi, hindi kilala. Ngunit buo ang kanyang loob sa pagpapagamit sa Panginoon. Buo ang kanilang puso. Mga taong katulad na naging battle cry ng aming heart. Nung naging realidad ang, su ang, ang super colossal wave of God's glory na ito, ang aming mga puso begin to cry out something we've never had, we never cry out before. It became our battle cry. I begin to say, I begin to tell the Lord, Lord, give me the Philippines or I die. Ihatag ka na ako, ginoo ang tibuok Pilipinas. Nilitungon kay gusto na ako, maangkon ang Pilipinas. Kundi tungod nga gusto ng ginoo nga maangkon ang tibuok Pilipinas. The Philippines does not belong to the hands of the enemy. The Philippines is not the devil's domain and property. The Philippines belongs to God. But this nation can never be belong to God if it doesn't belong to us. And so our battle cry Lord, to the Lord is we said, Lord, give us the Philippines or we die. Why kapuslanan ang akong kinabuhi nga ako magpadayon sa Ginoo? Dasig ko kaayo magdayeg sa Ginoo inig ma Domingo, inig ma Miyerkules. Pero pag abot sa kung asa to adto ang mga makasasala, wa akoy kaisog nga ingnon or ipaangbit kanila ang maayong balita tungod kay ako na ulaw. That's useless. It would just be performance. I mean, even our praise and worship team, we would encourage them, don't just perform and lead praise and worship so that you'll be able to bring the, the congregation into the presence of God. I mean, help with, just like what everybody else is doing, help everybody else in getting people saved. I mean, winning the lost at any cost. You won't be able to bring your magandang buses mo sa langit because your voice will no longer be heard because... Can you imagine there will be multi millions of people there maririnig pa ba yung magandang buses mo it's nothing but i can guarantee one thing will be recognized when we when you get to heaven of someone you have led to the lord you will be recognized not just by heaven but you will be recognized by those if they have gone ahead of you they will be you will be recognized by them and they will begin to thank you thank you for coming your way i mean getting out of your way sharing the gospel to us. Me and my house is here because you did what you did. And you have not done it in your own might. You have done it with the Spirit of the Lord. And so I, I, would, like, I would like to pray for everyone. I mean, there, there's supposed to be something burning inside of you even today as I speak. It's not just about making lots of money. 
It's not about be becoming famous. It's not about becoming powerful. Because all of those, your money is not an end. It should only be a means to an, to the end, to an end. And the end is, people are safe. You use your money to get people safe. You use your talent to get people safe. You use the anointing of God that He had placed upon your life to get people safe. You only use your influence to get people safe. And whatever God has given you, hayaan mo ito yung magamit ng Panginoon para ang may sakit, ang, ang mga nangawawala, mga makasalanan ay maligtas, ang mga may sakit ay gumaling. Ang mga inaalihan ng masamang spiritu ay mapalaya. At kahit pati yung patay ay mabuhay. Dahil tayo ay nasa panahon kung saan makikita natin ang pinakamalakas na pagkilos ng Panginoon. I would like to read, gusto kong basahin, ang prophecy that was done by Smith Wigglesworth back in 1939. Here's what he said. Hallelujah. If I have lost it, I will get back tomorrow night. But I, I mean, it's in my notes. He prophesied that a day is coming. And when that day comes, people will see the greatest move of God that the world has ever seen. He said the greatest. Now, this is a man talking. Ang tao nga nagsulti ni ini, usa ka tao nga gigamit sa ginoo aron mabuhi ang more than 20 ka mga patay. More than 20 ang iyang gibuhi while he was alive. Including his wife. He raised his wife from the dead. Although ang kanyang wife ay nibalik ra pud mamatay because pagkatapos ng iyang gibuhi ang iyang wife's gingnan siya sa iyang, sa iyang wife ay ko gistor buha muuli nako pakialamero ka now, that's that's my that's my interpret I mean my para praise and you see this is a man who was tremendously used by God in signs wonders and miracles if you got a hold, if you grab a hold of his book and what's, I mean, history concerning what the Lord has done through him, you'll be surprised. And yet he said, the day is coming, which is actually he's referring to your day and my day. God will move in a way. He's going to bring his breath once again into the world. Hihinga ang Panginoon. Hihinga ang Panginoon. He's going to breath the breath of life that he have never been able to breath before. And this breath of God will cause life to come, will cause healing to happen, will cause the devils to tremble and flee away. And so, before I go ahead and pray for every single one of you, I want to ask my daughter, Josh. She actually wrote the song. She composed the song. And then, Jin, who will be with her, is the one who put music in the song. And the title of the song is Rua, which means breath of God. I pray that he would breath unto us one more time the breath of life. Whatever seems to be dead in any area of your life, Unsa may parte sa imong kinabuhi nga patay? Bisag patay nga kuko. Unsa tagalog sa kuko? I mean bisaya sa kuko. Kuko. Kuko pod. Kung naa kay patay nga kuko, I mean the breath of God can bring life to your kuko. Hallelujah. Muuli ka pag uli nimo, ihubad nimo imong sapatos pag uli ang imong nang lagom nga tudlo nawala ang panglagom kay gibuhi sa Ginoo. Now, you might say, but what is that to me? Unsa man sa ako? Wa makuy labot ana. Well, 
para sa usa ka tao na ang iyang pag sige siya galaom sige siya gatuo nga usa ka adlaw mo abot ra gyud nga ang ang patay nga tudlo mabuhi ang patay nga kuko mabuhi unya niya abot na gyud sa iya ha milagro kung kung dili ka na milagro sa imo ha hinom eksaba diha tabangi ang iyang istorya mahimog imong istorya sa uban ing na nga ang Ginoo nagahimog milagro sa imong kauban sa imong igsoon unya ing na sila nga kung kini gibuhat sa Ginoo sa akong igsoon iya kini usab buhaton pagabuhaton kanimo because every miracle will ignite another miracle sa matag usa ka milagro mga anak kini og bagong milagro og daghan hantod nga daghan kaayo milagro so as they sing the song i would like you to just listen to the words and then i will pray hallelujah
Can everybody stand up, please? Close your eyes, lift up your hands towards heaven. And let me pray over every single one of you here. Those of you that are watching, you can receive as much as these people that are here with me face to face receives. There's no distance with God. There's no, God is not limited by time and space. Father, we have come tonight. We actually have come not expecting anything coming from a man. Because we have not come for a man. We came for you. And because we all came for you, not one of us will leave disappointed. As eyes are closed and hands are lifted towards you. Breath of God. Breath on each and every one of this precious one. From the very top of their heads to the very soles of their feet. I pray. Touch them, Lord God. Set each and every one of them on fire. Empower them, fill them, saturate them. Let them never be the same. So that even as they go, they will bring the sheaves in, they will bring the harvest in. And by the power of God, nothing will be impossible with them and for them. Oh, Spirit of God, move all around this place. I know that you will meet us at the level of our hunger. As we hunger for your touch, as we hunger for your move, as we hunger for your spirit, Lord, I know you would come to fill us. And that's why we are so blessed. We are so blessed that you would have to come. We who are ordinary men and women, who are we that you would come? Who are we, Lord God, that you would touch us? Who are we, Lord God, that you would breath the breath of life on us? But because you love us and you love others, Because you care about us and you care about everybody else. I thank you, Lord God, that through the lives of each and every one of us, the world will see, the world will feel, the world will smell, will have a taste, and will hear the voice of God. And that many people will be brought in, the harvest of souls. Mga kalag, madala sa imong tilan. Makabig in the inning panahuna. I thank you, Lord God, that we are not just going to see the greatest move of God that the world has ever seen, but we would also witness the greatest harvest of souls that the world has ever seen. Father, we thank you. Gamito nimo ginoo ang matagusa ka namo. Come on, everybody, say this after me. Lord, here am I. Use me, use me to do your will according to your ways in your perfect timing. My eyes will see. Many people will come to the saving knowledge of the truth. They will not just be added to the church. But they will be added to the kingdom of God. Which will continue to advance. In this end time. That even the gates of hell will not prevail. Against me. And against us. The work of God will prosper in the land. The work of God will increase, will multiply, and 
that all of the Philippines will be covered with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, if you believe what you have said, come on, shout amen. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, if you cannot pray in the Holy Ghost, sa dahilan, sa inungdan nga wala ka pang mabaptay sa Holy Spirit, I would like you to run down to the front. I'm going to pray for you to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm not the baptizer, Jesus is, but you may be a new Christian or maybe you've been a Christian for too long, but you have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking tongues. I want to give you the opportunity if you would come, please. Go ahead. Come on. Not just walk down to the front, but run down. Come as we pray. Anybody? Come, 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 come. Those of you that are already filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost, pray. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Come on. 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 The siga kini mga niya sa tubangan. Come on, the siga. The siga sila nato. Reso to broko na bo, rebeke na bo, rebeke na bonde, leke na bonde. Hala masaka to robo, rebeke na bo, blaba karabande. Hela bo, rebeke na bo, seke na bonde, leke na bonde, leke na bonde, leke na bonde. Hira baso to robo, rebeke na bonde, leke na bonde. Libero choko to robo, rebeke na bo, raba karabase, leke na bonde, leke na bonde. There was, there was a couple who came to church the other night. They've been a Christian for many years, but have never been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Ingon sa pastor, dagang bisis na sila, encourage nga muwato sa tubangan para mabautismuhan. Wag yung may tabo sila. But two nights ago, both of them came, husband and wife. I mean, immediately they got filled with the Holy Spirit. And because they got filled with the Holy Spirit, kabalumo kung sila gibuhat right after they got filled with the Holy Spirit, muhawa nami dito at tung dapita muhawa nami ingon sila. Karong buntaga ang ilang last breakfast in their city, dili ko mutogot ng dili sila tagaan o Glitchon Valley. I mean, nahimugas ang Glitchon Valley just because they received the Holy Spirit. Now, let me give you the instruction very quickly. Tingin po sa akong saglit. Tanang mo sa akwa. The Word of God says in Acts chapter 2 verse 4 And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit Who got filled? All of them Not one was left out Not one was left out Not one of you will be left out Every single one of them was filled with the Holy Spirit Who filled them? What, what filled them? The Holy Spirit Now what happened right after they were filled with the Holy Spirit? The Word of God says they began to speak in tongues Who did they speak in? the people not the Holy Spirit it is the Holy Spirit's responsibility to do the feeling but it is your responsibility to do the talking one guy came to the altar to be baptized with the Holy Spirit I prayed for them they prayed with me and I prayed for them and I said begin to speak one young guy didn't know what to say because when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will begin to speak language you will never know. You never understand. So, what's your kapalo kung sa yung iyan po? Siguro na siya inclination sa Japanese language. He knows arigato. So he started to, arigato. Which is, it was not tongues. Because that is a Japanese language and most of us know what, what arigato means. But then right after, in the middle of him speaking arigato, nanigas ang kanyang panga, until he began to speak in a language he never learned, he never knows. If God can do it with one, he can do it with all. Let the Spirit do the feeling, you do the talking. You have to open your mouth, you have to begin to speak. Okay? Is that agreeable? So, I'm going to pray, and then I will pray for you, then we'll pray in the Holy Ghost okay everybody pray this with me amahan nga langit nun dagang salamat nga imo ako gitagaan o gasa sa kalwasan pinaagi ni Jesus 
aron na akay apan na akay laing gasa na pinaagi sa balang spiritu ako magkanaay gahom o karong gabi ako kineng kidawat balang spiritu pun ako hantod nga ako magsulti o laing pinulungan ang akong ngabel magsugon o maglitok o pinulungan nga wala na ako mahibali ngunit kabaluko kinigikan kanimo o kinigahom para kanako daghang salamat kino ako ito ako ni Dawat karong gabi una sa ngalan ni Jesus ako na lamang mo ang punin niyo kino daghang salamat in the name of Jesus Lord you've said in your word that you're going to give us the Holy Spirit and we are going to receive power so that after we receive power you will use us to become witnesses and that as a witness we would start from Jerusalem we'll go to all of Judea, Samaria and then even unto the ends of the earth and I thank you God that as you come as Jesus baptized each and every one of these I thank you that there will be an evidence of speaking in an unknown tongue everybody close your eyes lift up your hands higher at the count of three I will count one to three I will say pray I will say speak and then I will speak together with you in the Holy Ghost okay Father I thank you you are faithful and true to your word each one of them will be filled right now as they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus one two three pray come on speak 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 Rabba sakato breve kalabori beka no mo sakata rabonde Rabba la bo sakata bla 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 mano so he la bo sakato breve ke pray ke pray sakato breve me ba 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 bla le bo ro bo sakata lo bo de beka lo bo le bo ro bo de beka lo bo sakala bo de le kala bo ya ba sakara ba 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 sakha ya ba 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 Hallelujah. Okay, look, listen, listen. Okay, listen. Kayo nga niya sa tumangan. Let me ask you, how many of you had actually literally spoken tongues? Just let me see your hand. Okay, put your hands down muna. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. How many of you have literally spoken tongues? You've spoken tongues. Hands up. Taas ka man. Sa aduhan. Okay, the rest of you, what happened? Wa miki sulti. Kano man? Wala ka mag sulti. That's the reason. I mean, you're waiting for the Spirit to do the talking. No, the Spirit is doing the feeling. It is your job to do the talking. Basta tong wala akong kabalo kung masay ko sulti. That's why you have to speak what you do not know. The evidence of speaking in tongues in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you don't have to speak what you know. You only have to speak what you do not know. So we'll do it again. Okay, thank thank for both of you. We'll do it again. You're going to speak. Okay? At the count of three. One, two, three. Speak! Shakataba bramo sekarabom de bekarabon. Raba so corabore bekarabore bekarabon de la carabande. Lava so torabo carabore bekarabon de la carabonde. Remo so cotorabo de bekarabon de bekarabon. Lama so cotorabo de bekarabore bekarabon. Lama sa cotorabo de bekarabore bekarabon de la carabon. Lava so corabo. Okay, stop. Do you have it now? You got it? Praise the Lord. You got it? You got it? I mean, that's simple as that. I mean, some people would say, kung dili ka matumba, wa ka mabaptize. Kung dili ka magkurug-kurug, they say, it's not baptism. Baptism, the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, natumba man ka wala, nangurug-kurug ka wala, kung ikaw nagsulti sa lahing pinulungan, you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit initially. 
But that has to continue on and on and on and on. When I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I was 17. Ugulaan nyo na lang kung ilang taon ako yan. Since that day, up to this very day, I speak in tongues every single day. As a matter of fact, I prayed in tongues more than with my understanding. I prayed in tongues more than with prayers that I know. Because I so treasured the gift. I mean, so amazing. Nga ako sa katao, inunani tagaan sa ginuugu sa kagasa. Kahuman ni Jesus, tagaan pa ugasa sa balansin. Kensa ba ko? If this is not something so precious. We have been blessed tonight. Pastor Ashoni, thank you so much. We have been blessed. Magkita-kita po tayong muli tomorrow night. I believe, I mean, like what I've said, this is going to spread in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. At this time, I'd like you to bless the man of God who has ministered to us tonight. Uh, in the book of Galatians, it says there, those who have received the word of God or have been taught by the word of God, they must also share the good things that they have received from the Lord. So we'll give you the opportunity to bless the man of God. Just put it in an envelope. If you need an envelope, raise up your hand. If you need an envelope. Yes, can somebody distribute the envelope, please? Get the envelope. Distribute the envelope. And... Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay. This is just the first night. Tomorrow, we would ask you to come back at 6.30 in the evening. And uh, if we need to add more chairs, we have another room. Uh, we'll do something on what uh, needs to be done. We can have the other room, the overflow room, or we can add more chairs here so that we still... Uh, we still have the social distancing, okay? So tell us how many of you are coming tomorrow night so that we would know in advance and we will be able to prepare, okay? How many of you are coming back tomorrow night? And you're going to tell others as well. You bring them. Bring them here. Let's pray. Father, we have been blessed by your word. And we will also bless the man of God that you have brought to us tonight. And Father, thank you. We know that this is just the beginning, but there shall be more. And it's going to grow, increase in our hearts, in our lives, and you will use each one of us. Father, as we bring our offerings before you, as you have commanded us in the book of Galatians, Lord, thank you that this will return, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. As uh, you said, that he who sows for the gospel shall reap a hundredfold return. This is going to be used specially in spreading the fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you have ushers going around? Okay, just stay in your seats. Just have the ushers to go around. Oh, so we will not violate the safety protocols of our government. Okay, it's wisdom. What time tomorrow? 6.30. Okay, 6.30 tomorrow. And bring your friends. And if your friends could not come, tag them, share share a live stream to them. Anyone else? Okay. No more? Over there. Over there. Just put it together. Brother Ireland, and uh, you take care of that. Uh, keep it safekeeping for tomorrow.
Let's all stand up. Just join us. Lift up your hands towards heaven. And let me declare God's blessings to you. Father, thank you for your spirit is moving upon your people. Your people are blessed as they depart from this place. They're blessed as they enter their homes. Thank you, Lord, that the fire is increasing in their hearts. We ask you, Lord, to protect them in their way home. Lord, thank you that they will be able to get transportation and arrive home safely. Your people are blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Good night. Again, exercise, social distancing as you go out. Just go one by one. Just go one by one. Oh. Okay, next. Yes. Oh. One by one lang gihapon. Avoid lang ta sa mag up. <laughs>